For 28 days in Shizhou, 16 students from Shanghai American School conducted a long-term research on a topic of their personal interest. I examined the different perspectives of local residents and others who were associated with the growing tourism industry of Shizhou. On a higher level, I felt an urgent need to address the current situation of rapid development in many areas of the world, in which the past and present came into contact to determine the future. Thus, in order to envision the future of Shizhou, one must consider the perspectives of the business people, the perspective of the government, and the perspectives of those in the tourist industry. My greatest source of information were small business owners. Since the last few years, business people received greater income through the benefits of more tourist consumptions, thus increasing the quality of their lives. Even more, tourists have helped businesses flourish by sharing their experience on social media. As Mrs. Fu says, her wine has now reached to other provinces like Xinjiang. When I interviewed Mrs. Ha, a worker at a traditional clothing shop, a different thought sparked in my mind. Tourism was a great method for villagers in Shizhou to pursue their dreams. Through facing tourists on a daily basis, Mrs. Ha can gain experience and prepare herself with more confidence when she starts her own clothing business in the future. As for the younger generation, tourism brings along many opportunities for their personal growth. However, some villagers have shared concerns about environmental issues, such as Mrs. Zhao mentioning about the increase of trash due to uncontrolled tourist influx. For instance, baba, a traditional Shizhou snack popular to tourists, emits smoke containing carbon dioxide, and she points out that the government cannot take any immediate actions since it is a big appeal to tourists. As the world is showing interest in Shizhou, I wonder if the local residents are ready to handle this advancement and transition. There are varying opinions on the preservation of tradition. Mrs. Dong believes that the current tradition is being preserved well, while Jia Jia and Mr. Hu believes that tourists merely come to Shizhou mostly with the intention of entertainment instead of genuinely wanting to understand the culture. Half of the business people I interviewed were people from other cities in China, such as Mr. Sun from Jiangsu, who provided an interesting insight in a way that Shizhou was utilizing tourism to preserve the culture by integrating modern components with the past, which raises a question, is the culture likely to diminish without the support of tourism? I also inspected the government's point of view on tourism. The Urhai Lake policy caused thousands of businesses to close in order to protect the lake by minimizing tourist attractions around the area. Due to the Urhai Lake policy, lots of people were not able to fish, but the government's attention is mainly focused on improving water qualities for now. According to Mr. Linden, co-founder of the Linden Center, the government spends around $500 million to preserve buildings and historical artifacts. Furthermore, Shizhou has been chosen as one of the 60 most beautiful villages in China, and the government provided money to the village. The government's plans comes into partial agreements and contradictions with the general consensus of villagers. Although constructions will be sped up in the future, it is worth paying attention to the change in the concept of culture and how the villagers the Bai people will respond to it. Lastly, I decided to interview those who were directly contributing to tourism. Mr. Linden believes that he is incorporating soft power and encourages the Chinese government to demonstrate soft power as well, which includes using culture to appeal to the foreign masses. The workers of the Linden Center were mostly local residents. Mrs. Aling, who worked at the center for five years, shared her personal growth. Although her initial purpose was to earn money, she said she had gained far more valuable experiences, such as learning English from classes provided by the Linden Center, communicating with both domestic and foreign tourists, and broadening her view towards the world through taking on a job that requires a mindset to embrace external communications. She claimed that she had found more value and purpose to her life. Mr. Chen, a guard at the center, showed a unique reaction when I asked him to predict the future of Shizhou. He responded in a manner as if it was strange to question what the future would look like. 
Rather than personalizing the issue in his own favor, he drew a bigger picture and thought that the future will be naturally decided upon the next generations. As a result, another thought-provoking point approaches me and changes my perception. Is there a need to deliberately steer the future to a direction that meets our needs and expectations? After all, Shijo itself will decide its future. To make a prediction of Shijo's future, one must consider the perspectives of the business people, the government, and the people in the tourism industry. Before my stay in Shijou, my perspective was slightly skewed in a way that absolutely supported maintaining the village's past. The moment of revelation arrived when I realized that there was no need to impose my personal wills on the topic. I was merely part of what every single historical period of every single place went through in a stage of change. Therefore, this project is meaningful, that I could participate in such a significant historical procedure and actually communicate with many different members who were part of it. Frankly, the future of Shijo cannot be predicted in any sort of way. The various perspectives are crucial to the advancement over time, but as Mr. Chen has mentioned, nobody knows the future. The small town will not remain in the same way, but there is hope an opportunity to make something great out of what the people were born with. Within years, Shijo would have chosen its own adventure and determined its promising future to their descendants. And we will all be there to witness it.